Hey, what's the deal, y'all? Back with another episode of The Rock yes, Report. Sir. And this one, I got my homeboy, Main Soul, in the building. What's the deal, man? What's the deal, my baby? Go chill, ahead and chill, uh, chill, chill. introduce yourself and tell yes, people sir. a little bit it's about you. Yes, sir. Main Soul, man. I'm coming live and direct from Detroit East Side, man. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, man. One man's right here, man. Um, Yeah. Hey, look, do me a favor, bro, because um, you mentioned that you was from the east side of Detroit. Yeah, 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 Tell yeah. Tell people about the side of the city that you're from and, you know, just kind of how music became a passion growing up on this side. Well, uh, east side of Detroit, uh, Seven Mile and Mound, um, between, uh, over there by the Nevada area. Um, so, basically, my passion started from, like, the whole uh, underground boom bap type ordeal, um, stemming from my pops, you know. Um, uh, homeboys, one of the late, great uh, Jay Dilla. So, um, coming from that, Long line of a uh, boom bat man. It, it's it's deeply rooted, man. Word, deeply rooted, that's for, sure, for sure, for sure. Um, it's heavy and inf- heavy, uh, heavily influenced. Uh, so it's I do have other influences like people coming out now. Um, it's a couple, but um, yeah, that's really where it come from. Detroit and East Side. Man. You know, I met a lot of artists in my lifetime, bro. But like the first time I met you. Like the the level of passion that I seen you speak this yes. music shit with, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I was literally convinced, and I might be going out on a limb with this, and I might <laughs> even offend some of my cousins who do music, but I don't think I've ever met anybody more passionate about this shit, bro. Man, <laughs> sometimes I can almost offend people, like how hard, like we could be having a debate at work, hypothetically. Right. And, um, somebody could say something crazy, like a uh, prime example. I hear this all the time: Cole is boring. It's time to fight. Mm, it's mm, time mm. to fight. <laughs> that's, just, that's just something small, but like you know, when it comes to like this um, era of music, man, there's so many different flavors, man. And my forte, my passion is really in the pen, like really being creative with that pen, man. And um, yeah, man, I, it can get real heated for me, man. Oh yeah, for sure. For me, I, I think you know the last time we talked, I told you about the time I got into a fight on the back of the bus, bro. <laughs> the dude had the fucking nerve to say that Soldier Boy was the best rapper alive and Tupac was trash, but. What happened is he caught me at a wrong time in my life. He caught me at a time where I was heavy, heavily into the Illuminati conspiracy theories. And I'm like, you know what? Tupac was the only rapper that spoke against this shit. So I'm only listening to his shit. He oh, caught me wow. at the wrong time, offended me, bro. We got into a fight. I got suspended from school and I had the time to Yo, sit at home. actually scrapping with the hands? Bro, I had him choked up on the back of the bus, bro. I swear to God, I was... Dog, he just made me so mad. See, I don't know if I'm going to put his ass on the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing that, but... It get heated, you know, and I get kind of irritated with certain stuff that get put out and get glorified, and that's no credit to, no discredit to anybody's um, artistic uh, expression, nothing like that. It's just, I'm a little bit more uh, passionate about certain yeah. stuff that come out, you know, I think do think certain things are oversaturated. Yeah. I do think the wrong things are being glorified. Yeah. Uh, I just want uh, the art to really just put me, I just want it to be like a uh, well thought out. No, not just anything. You shouldn't make some tonight and then put out the next day. You right. know, just really put some thought into your art, man. Okay, it's, let's dive into it because you said you mentioned that a lot of stuff. You don't really approve being out today. Like what? Like for what? Well, like what? Give me an example. Um, like how depression is a whole genre of music, like mm-hmm. sad boy music. My homeboy says it all the time. We joke about it, and it. You know, you have to find some type of light in you know the darkness and whatnot. That whole saying, but uh. Certain things, I just think like the whole opioid and depression and just, it shouldn't be glorified, but that's not something you want to put into babies, you know, the young kid that's that's hoping to meet you one day. Wow. You know, you got to grow up. You got to grow out of that. Hopefully you do grow out of being right. depressed and sad boy music, but uh, I don't think that whole epidemic is even a thing. Like even um, how gangster music has evolved, like uh. Gangsta music back then was more so like a, it was an expression. It mm-hmm. was the hood instead of the hood, but it was like more so, you know, we don't want to be here. You know, we wouldn't, yeah. we didn't ask to be in this position. Right. And I was like, we glorify <laughs> killing motherfuckers or, you know. Right. Um, and, and, and that's the thing about Tupac, you know, he obviously wasn't the best rapper as far as lyrics under no circumstances. Okay. But the level of influence that he had is what gave him his, you know, his respect in the game. Like, bro, you influenced a lot of people to make Correct certain decisions. Correct me if decisions. I'm wrong. Wasn't um, Thug Life an acronym for something? Um, I actually forgot because I'm not the biggest Tupac Thug head. Thug Life. Oh, man. The hate you give little infants. Fuck everybody. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, the thought about who puts the acronym on right. Thug Life. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on, bro. Nowadays, some niggas would just be saying to say it. You see what I'm saying? Anything. So. Have you ever heard of a, a Tupac song called Black Cotton? I'm not going to lie. I've 
like, I'm not going to say I haven't cracked the surface with Pop. Yeah. Ask me some big questions, a whole different story. Okay. But Pop, um, no, I haven't heard that. I haven't okay, heard the that reason either. why I asked because we just got done talking about his strong level of influence. He influenced me so much that I got black <laughs> cotton tattooed on dead. both of my wrists, bro. And like you said, he gave everything meaning and acronyms, and he said that black cotton in Africa was a symbol for unrewarded struggle. Like the slaves used to just kind of like worship that as their their spiritual rewards to what they had to go through, rather than having man or mankind or the white man reward them for what they go through. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, let me let me get let me try to adopt this culture real quick. But um, yeah, you like you mentioned, influence you just though. You just put me in. <laughs> I would have never known that story or even that um. Yeah, you just put me here. Yeah, put me so. here. But everybody, you can't deny Pac's influence. Pac is literally in, in everything. You know, yeah. um, you can't deny Pac's influence. Yeah, I'm. I'm here. I heard. I'm hearing right now that they're studying his poetry in different colleges and shit. So like, I had my Tupac phase in 2010. <laughs> that's 14 years after his death. Yeah. I think that's powerful how like your content can literally still influence people long after you're gone. That's that's what that's what the passion is though. Right. Like. Like people may laugh about his flow, but you you know when he said that line that he felt what he just said. Right. Like, you know that's what I spoke my report to the butt like it's the last motherfucker left. <laughs> and I guarantee you, a hundred niggas was like, "Yo, this nigga, this nigga spitting." You know what I mean? This nigga spitting. Like, see, it's like right. certain people can get away with certain things when they say certain things. Right. You know, and it's like. You know, it was some life into that. You know, put some life into what you say. Don't just say anything. Right. Bro. Come on, man. Say some. Talk to me, man. Talk <laughs> you, to me. Do you listen to or respect uh, Nas at all? For sure. Um, that's when you say that me and somebody was, uh, you know, my, uh, another artist I was with was talking about Nas, and I was comparing myself. Not really comparing. I was like, I want to tell a story like this so bad. Yeah. I want you to be able to really sit back and close your eyes and be like, damn, I'm in New York in 96, 97 on the corner. Like, exactly. I know what the fuck he talking about. He really does that to you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And Nas is one of the most amazing dudes. Like, um, yeah. What else can you say? What, what, what can't it. he do? <laughs> I truly what believe What can't it. he do? And I don't. I honestly think I think he's like more so thrown under the rug when it comes to like like respect level. I know the right people respect Cause he, him because he low key. He, he Nas chills out like right. Nas is Nas like. And he's he not trying to fight to be the best. Like no, I don't care that, what you call me. You watch Drink Champs? I seen a few episodes. You watch that Drink Champs or not? So he got an episode on Drink Champs. Yeah. Let's go then. I'm yeah, about to check it out. Yeah, then. yeah. He he chilling like Nas is not trying to force nothing. Yeah, I would say he's more of an entrepreneur at this point in his life. You know, um, I know he does on. have a, a a clothing line or something like that. It was a boutique or something in Vegas, something like mm-hmm. that. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, don't quote me on that. He's yeah. working on several different like black owned business ventures and shit. Fire. You know, Forbes magazine type shit. Always fire. But, you know, obviously Jay-Z set the standard for what, you know, entrepreneur and hip-hop, how to combine that whole little shit. Like, you know, you being the artist, you know what I'm saying, yourself, like, how do you feel like like your brand could at some point be leveraged later on down the line for business opportunities outside of music? I've been saying this shit for so long. Um, So I'm going to tell you where it stems from and how I'm going to do this. Uh, my barber at the current time, only lineups, obviously I got dreads. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's a, um, a, a entrepreneur and whatnot. He uh, he does real estate. Mm-hmm. So um, he just put put me a hit to a lot of game as far as real estate, how to go about it. Shout out Mike. Um, but I have always wanted to start my own, like my, my area where I grew up and I've always mm-hmm. wanted to do my own Section 8. Cut the government out, you dealing with me and, and my squad and my select people that take care of my people in this okay. area. And just a so it'd be my own version of section eight. You know black people, you know right. section we definitely know what section eight is. We all know this. But um hypothetically if it was section. called um Main Souls Homes, whatnot, just take care of my vicinity until I'm able to branch out. So right. take care of the people that live in that area, build it up, uh make it look better, you see right. what I'm saying? Maintenance all that type of stuff. So um that'd be one thing I wanna do. Obviously mm-hmm. every artist wants merch, clothes, you see what I'm saying, feel yeah. fresh. Um other than that, man, I think headphones is oversaturated right now. Everybody yeah. did headphones that whole era. We see who lasted longest. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, that's about it. You know, um, mm-hmm. I haven't really thought too much in, into anything else besides my own little Section Eight plan. As far as like when yeah. I'm bigger than you know, when I'm out of here, you know, what yeah. I'm saying I got, I'm able to spend time and really figure that out. I think what's most important um, is the fact that when I asked you that question. The first thing you said was something that benefits other people, not necessarily yourself. Oh, yeah. Like, 
like there's like growing up, you know, um, in the city, like in the ghetto, as people would say. Yeah. Um, is is you can also look at the good times, get look at the bad, and yeah. sometimes in in the city, you know, most of the homes aren't always up to par how they should look. You mm-hmm. know, outdated. You just have to live, have some over your over yeah. your head. So I wouldn't mind if I'm up M's, you know. I'm J. If I'm J at this point, right. Seven Mile and Mound, right? You know, we we live in swell over here. Until yeah. I get to the other side of Seven Mile, we live in swell over here, you mm-hmm. know. Um, definitely, just like Jay went back and bought Marcy Projects. If I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. Oh, he bought the Marcy Projects. I believe Project. he went back and did something. I'm not gonna say he bought it. I yeah, think he did it wouldn't surprise me at all if he would already invested a billion. Exactly, <laughs> something. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I definitely want to do something like that as far as where I grew up at. Um. And then, you know, clothes and shoes and shit come, they come, you know, they come being an artist, you know, uh, yeah. eventually when you gather a team together. So, yeah, yeah, def- that's really number one. You know, when I get when I get there on top, that's fucking fire. too, Because you, um, you mentioned merch and that made me think of right away. It made me think of uh, Nipsey Hussle, you know, because oh, yeah. he was trying to use music for more than just music. It, I don't even think he really gave two fucks about music. Okay. He was more so bigger on his purpose and what he wanted to accomplish. And I feel like his death inadvertently actually made what he was trying to accomplish happen faster. So, like, um, said, what do know. you feel like, how do you feel like, you know, somebody giving back to their community, you know, in the music industry and to have it all just kind of, like, just delete it like that? Uh, it takes bravery. What Nipsey did to be in the center of, the you know, center. the center Schlossen. of what, what he knows is, Schlossen, like, bro. this is the hood, bro. This Anything ha- anything goes over here, you know? Literally. Um, it takes bravery. And we know how Detroit is. Detroit mm-hmm. is... It's nothing to be played with either, you right. know. Um, people hate every day. Hate drives success in a, in a way. Um, mm. So yeah. h- how I would do it, you know, um, in a similar way, you know, you have pop smoke. You see what I'm saying? You got to be careful nowadays, man. People do not want to see you win. They don't see no type of success. So with me doing that, of course, I would move in the right way. Um you know, just just I get it done, man. But how way. how do you move in the right way though? Like, is that did that mean like maybe I won't drive the nicest cars through the hood and make other people jealous? Man, people, people, man, people get killed in neons, man. O two neons with a with a donut on it, man. Like, yeah. people die every day. It's just you know, um, picking and choosing your battles, man. Uh, ha- having people that you trust handle certain things for you, knowing that you can't do it yourself. Yeah, entertainers can't go to the movies without being bothered. Right. You know, I remember Jay saying, um, he goes and takes Blue Ivy out and um. Cameras and shit is everywhere. Like, yeah, you know, you can't be normal at this point, and you know that this is the risk you take trying to be an entertainer. Exactly. So, um, I think with that, man, I think me and my future team, you know, people I love now would would definitely figure it out. You know, mm-hmm. they definitely figure it out. I'm still gonna be in touch. You know, right. In it's just a, with the, it, yeah, with, the, street, with right. the yeah, but it's just a matter of you know, um, how to how to get it done, man. You right, you right. And man. so like you know, Peasy, I, I listen to him. You know, obviously he's a heavyweight here in Detroit. But he said one bar that always stuck with me. He said, when you level up, you got to move different. That means, like, those trips that I used to take down the street to the store and Hell grab a no. clear fruit, that shit dead. I won't be able to do that once I reach and, a certain and, level. And, and, and you probably going to laugh when I say this. This is, like, I'm really risking not being able to pull up to the Coney at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what you're giving up, though. Like, like now, I, I'm, not, I'm not coming from, like, a celebrity uh, standpoint yet. Now I'm like, do I really want to risk my life at Coney with this, this little ass chain? Right. <laughs> you feel me? Hey, do I re- do I really want to risk you right. know a nigga knocking my my flip flops off real quick? Like, yeah, you know, and, and it, it we can like that's what I mean. We gotta show some light inside the darkness, man. Make sure that shit never prevails. But you know, Word. like we gotta you gotta really you know pick and choose your battles, celebrity or not. You know, celebrities just get picked on, man, because they got some type of success, man. Blessings on blessings. That's it, man. Damn. That's yeah. It's, but I'm risking that Coney Island run for sure. You know, I often ask myself because you know one of my one of the, you know the guy I looked up to one of my mentors Gary V. I don't know if you follow. Oh fire! Heavyweight, bro. People see Gary. If you, people say people see Gary V. Like I won't listen to dog. Take away how he look. Yeah. You be like that fire. Who is that? Yeah. White dude. Who is that? Older dude. That shit, bro. Facts. And you Facts. know, so, and you know, he actually posted a picture. From like his old college days and shit. He All he hung did. around was black people, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He grew yeah, up yeah, in the yeah, hood, Springfield, yeah, New got Jersey. Hunger, man. Shout out Gary V. Gary V. got that hunger, bro. man. And you know, like him and Nipsey was like that. You know what I'm saying? They was cool. That I just found out not too long ago. Like oh, after man. him passing, I didn't know they was locked in like that until bro, Gary V. He, he, he's like, actually more tapped into the culture than I even thought. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just imagine your CEO sitting down with Lil Yachty 
got him quiet as hell in a room <laughs> or or sitting down with the baby, giving them advice on how to, you know, go about their careers and shit. Even if you the janitor at his company, you're gonna be like, damn, that's my CEO out there impacting the world and shit. So mm-hmm. he's built the he's been able to build an incredible relationship with like all of his employees and yeah, shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, the path that that man on, but he you know, he asked a really important question. He like, you know, do are people actually ready for success? We might say it play around with it but are we ready for that life because it's work like the fact that your life was probably and will never go back to normal like let's look at delante west for a second i don't know if you've just seen that video yes. of him that went viral a little while That's ago the, but and oh my god side note social media can be like a gift and a curse but in that mm. moment was a curse like you know i don't glorify shit like that but yeah. go ahead what you said bro no nah, it's just to show like even even you know work that predicament he was in like like, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from, like, just society coming after you no matter where, what point you reach. That shit's sad, man. It that is. That shit's really sad. That man was really, really up living his dream, and now that he down on his knuckles, I just publicized his, his lows of the low. You know, right. I don't really... Mm, and I really don't like Stories like that. that are so important, bro, because you know Adrian Peterson. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. He went broke, bro. And he made over $100 million in his career. That's the result of trusting the wrong people. I didn't even know that. Yup. He filed bankruptcy uh like six months ago, bro. A hundred million dollars. Antonio Brown pissed away thirty million dollars. Just couldn't like keep his mouth closed. So it's like, you know, it it, it all goes back to who you trust. Because yes. they say the five people closest to you are gonna be like responsible for like the majority of your success. Like if yes. th- if those five people are broke, you're more than likely gonna be broke. If those five people are go getters. You're more than likely gonna be a go getter. See, I'm I'm with and without that. I'm against. Oh, I'm against and for that. Um, cause what if all you have is your family and you're trying to win for the family? I've seen that scenario play out so many times, bro, and it always plays out the same way. Sometimes, if that family is toxic, you have to get away from that. Like it, it, it it's almost no way around it. Like you have to. Artists talk about it all the time, having to leave in order to come back and give back. I think Cole even mentioned it once. Going, leaving to come back, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, even in my household, like, you know, like, negative family members and shit like that, I took some time out. I had to go to Texas, bro, just to clear my mind. I wanted to be away from everybody. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have spent a year out of Texas to get away, man. It was the best decision I ever made. And what's interesting is I was only over there for a year, and I built my own family. Like, right now, I have family in Texas I can go live with, and I built that, you know what I'm saying? So, I think that's what happens. Like, family don't just mean blood. Like, even though our relationship is, br- uh, like, really a fresh relationship, bro, yeah. in 10 years, we can call ourselves closer than family. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like, Facts. just off the whatever, like, the, whatever we're able to do to help each other's lives out. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Sometimes yes. that will, you know, so, like, just scenarios like that. And I definitely agree with um, the whole aspect of the negative thought, like, moving away from them. But it's like, you know, um, it's hard to do that at times. It's hard to do that at times. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to do that at times. You know, um... That's like even with me, like with certain, um, I'm in album mode, and mm-hmm. it's like I'm trying to get somebody to see my vision. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's not it. That's not it. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, nigga, I'm, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. You should be feeling this more than anybody. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can kind of see, you know, I, I, but thank God I'm over that whole aspect of uh, mm-hmm. trying to force feed people my vision. Yeah. And what has that taught you? You know what I'm saying? Like showing people something and have them being completely oblivious to what's right in front of them. I have two two feelings. Um, on the right side, I have you know. All right, you will see. Uh, you you will see. Yep. You slept. Right. You will see. And yep. the other side is like maybe you just don't understand it. Mm-hmm. You know, so both of them is I'm a show, but one is like okay. You know what? You left out a very important one. What number three is like? It might be the <laughs> most harsh, but the most liberating. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've had times where people I'm close with, um, and I feel as if I made three bangers in the night, or mm-hmm. let's link, bro. I got I got some shit, and then sit back, take a All right, turn on so and so. It's a party now, you know, and you know it's it. Of course, it 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 dulls your confidence and mm-hmm. makes you feel that way. But I think mm-hmm. every artist should go through that time period or. A uh, phase in their life where you know yeah. um, you face with rejection mm. from your peers or you know hell your pastor at church you know yeah. anybody yeah. I feel like you should go through that just so you get in the industry somebody tell you no 
okay, I'm waiting for my yes. Yeah. You know, I'm waiting for somebody to feel me. I'm waiting for somebody to see what I'm what I see. Right. And I found I have like literally I can count on my hand maybe like three people. Mm-hmm. You know, family is family. They're going to always push you because, you know, yeah. oh, that's my brother or my cousin or not. But um, I have, like, three people that really sit in the lab with me and be like, did you write that? Did you do that? Damn. You know? And I appreciate them people so much. Like, so, so much, man. Um, So, you know, you eventually to all the artists that go through that, mm-hmm. that dry spell, people ain't fucking with them or, you know, not really giving them that drive, eventually that person will come around and fuck with you and yeah. want to understand where yeah. you're coming from or feel what you're saying. So, bro, you just, you just mentioned something so fucking important, bro. I literally made a tweet the other day that's saying, <laughs> and I stole it from Gary, but he said, losing never taught me, winning never taught me anything, but losing taught me everything. Oh, man. You can't learn anything from winning. You can't learn anything from being told yes all the time, bro. You need them no's. So, um, just... In that in that in that same token, um, mm-hmm. it's like me listening back to my first tape to now. I'm like that nigga was terrible. Like that nigga has grown <laughs> compared to now. You know, it's it's all a growing process. It's all a big thought process. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Like now, like I do feel like this is my best work yet that yeah. I've done. Like I have uh, cooking. I'm gonna release that and like that. Yet, yeah. But, um, I think it's the, like the best yet, you know. And um, what's the name? Um, of sensitive, it? conflicted waters. Conflicted waters. Conflicted waters. Can we can we at least go into what? what yeah, you know, we, what we, day we I, 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 give, I give y'all a scoop. Okay. You know, what it's about so um, conflicted waters is exactly what it sounds like. You know, um, picture yourself drowning. You know, um, you constantly dealing with um tons of shit. You know, your wife at home, um, family, um, just overall life in general, yin and yang. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Um, conflicted waters is a bunch of moves that I think anybody can tap into and understand and be like, I agree with that shit. Yeah. So yeah, conflicted that's, waters that's, is, is, is a whole bunch of layers, man. It's a whole bunch of layers. Man, that's fire though. But dude, like, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure what you said is gonna like give value to a lot of people because not a lot of us understand just the importance of just just losing, bro. Like every yes. piece of content that I put out, a lot of people don't notice. I've shared it with people a lot, you know, all the time. But mm-hmm. I tell people everything I put out, whether it's Instagram, Facebook. Or just YouTube, I fucking hate that shit. I hate it. Like I look <laughs> well, at. Why it, do you hate it though? And and here's the thing. I feel like we're all illusioned to a degree to like misjudge our own shit in a way. So it's a Maybe lot of artists. Something there. you want to make better. I, and a lot of times I do see room for improvement. Like, mm-hmm. Man, I could have did that better. Or at I least you did this see better. it though. And at least you're not okay with this. And see, and here. Gary taught me. He like, look, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect because perfection is a disguise for insecurity. Like Ooh, he said, I focus more on the bar. marathon. I focus more on the marathon than trying to have it all perfect. You that's, know what I'm saying? Bar. Let's focus on the long term of just like putting shit out. So he like, look, all my content is just put out. Like, okay. And if you get value from it, sweet. I ain't selling you nothing. Okay. I don't want nothing from you. I don't need mm. nothing from you. I'm putting this out because I'm passionate about putting this out. Okay. So how do you feel about artists flooding the game with just music then? Instead um, of taking a time with bodies of work, just releasing shit, just. It's Constantly. twofold. It's twofold, and it'll, it'll it goes back to what Gary said because you know a lot of people believe in, in in quality over quantity. Yeah. But the thing about the quality argument that we're not talking about is it's one hundred percent, completely, objective or subjective. Like, mm. like it's 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 based on an individual's point of view and what okay. they've experienced in their lives to be able to like, hey, this is trash. <laughs> like, remember when I asked you about Dear Mama the other day and you was yeah, like, I yeah, don't really do yeah, the mama type songs. Yeah, like, you know, for Somebody me, like, out there does worship their mama. Yeah. Lost her at an early age or something and that song and see, I'm not against, I'm, And I'm not against that because the song, yeah. once again, has influence. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Um, not to sound terrible or <laughs> cold hearted. I'm just not a mama's boy like that. That's yeah, that's perfectly fine. I'm just not a mama's boy like that. So me and my mama, uh, the two change joint my mama has. The, yeah, he has by his mom with Offset. Yeah, and who else was on there in that joint? Um, it was Offset, two change. Oh, YG. That's what it was. Uh, Chum make mama proud. Oh, okay, okay. All right. My mom loves that song. Yeah, we are, we a laugh joke to that song. With dear mama, it's like to me, it's just like. I would listen to this one. Not that it's word, better. Word, word, But it's just like, my, me and my mom have a different relationship. I and to saying. answer your question, nah, I don't have a problem with it. I think you could be successful both ways, taking okay. either route. Okay, okay. No take it. No take it. No take it. <laughs> you know, because like, like I said, with that, if, 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 if quality is subjective, it's based off the individual, 
Like, I feel like for every human being who's confident in what they do, I feel like there's a million people who will follow you. Like, your shit could be dookie. But there's a million people who will get behind your wave and feel that shit, bro. Because they connect to you on a whole different level. Like, wait, he fuck with Pokemon cards? Oh, I'm dead. about to listen to his shit. Wait a minute, he cut himself too? I'm listening to his shit. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it's not always about the actual substance itself. It could be okay. factors around that substance. Like, I don't know why I fuck with Gary so heavy. Like, you know, he told that real, man. Story. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when it's real, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? No matter what color it's coming from. but Facts. But I'm pretty sure there are certain factors where we both like relate. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah. I fuck with that. You know what I'm definitely, saying? Definitely, so, definitely, definitely, definitely. What's your thoughts on that though? Like um, quality or quantity? Which, I, I, which, I like. Which wins? I like quality because I mean, um, I can make three songs today and release them Friday, mm -hmm. next Friday. Mm -hmm. And I didn't put no thought into. It, so I just started writing bars and just put it out over any yeah. beat. You know, quality, when you sit down, you know quality over quality. You know, as you can tell, you can hear it. In music, you know? um, I just I just feel like, you know, you have to put something into it, some oomph into it, man. It Are you okay with Jay Electronica waiting 10 years to put out an album? Because he not, can use that same argument against you. Okay, so, I'm not okay with the 10 years fan. I'm not okay with that. What I'm okay with is if it's fired. Okay. If it's fired. You better deliver, huh? You, you you had you waited ten years, bro. Right. You had your your flash drive or hard drive <laughs> is about to explode, bro. It's about to explode, bro. Word. So I'm not okay with ten years. And right. At that point, it's not even quality of quantity anymore. It's just like, bro, you got a situation you trying to figure out. <laughs> but when it comes out, I'm praying that it's something like Watch the Throne. How they're how they're saying it oh, is. Because I need, I still need another album out of Jay. So I still need another album out of Jay. This gonna be I'm sorry. <laughs> this is going to be so good. I'm looking forward to it, though. But Facts. like I said, he, he could, if he chose to, he could be like, yeah, man, I just, I believe in quality. So, you know, I'm taking my time with this one. You know and, I'm and I'm pretty sure somebody like Jay Alec would say that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure any artist of that caliber. And if it's good, you ain't going to have, or it's no was, argument. Or they say something like, I'm trying to perfect it. Or we had, I made five albums. Like, you know, I've heard, we've heard that countless amount of times with yeah. artists. And it always, it's not a surprise. It always comes from greats. It yeah. always comes from greats. So, I mean, I, I can understand why you say that. But 10 years, come on, Jay Lett. 10 years, come on, man. Man, so. Come on, man. Let me ask you this. Um, and, you know, not, it's no right answer to this question. But this, where do you see your career in the next Five, let's even go 10, 10 years. Ten. What would you like to see your career? Um, I am fine. How do I want to say this? Um, 10 years from now, I'm going to definitely be Grammy nominated for sure. Uh, I'm going to be at a point in my life where um, people definitely respect the pen, uh, understand my direction and drive in the industry, mm -hmm. and just having fun still with it. You know, I think yes, a lot sir. of people, you know, after so long, um, they they lose sight of what they where they want to go yeah. and lose passion for the for the music. Yeah. I, ten years from now, I still want to be going hard, you know, yeah. um, enjoying it. Like I said, not even in my prime yet. Still mm -hmm. getting, still growing, still getting my feet exactly. wet. Um, top of the charts, man. Every I just want to be everywhere, man. That's fire, everywhere, bro. man. All over the globe, bro. That's for sure. fire, bro. You mentioned that you still want to make sure you're having fun, and not a lot of people do that because like you can get burnt out, especially when you got yourself into something. For all the wrong reasons. Oh, like, man. Like, I know people Come who on, do man. music, and they only doing it because other people still hyping them to do it. They don't even love it no more, bro. But, yeah, man, uh, Jay actually said that shit um, sitting right next to uh, Steve Forbes and Warren Buffett. Um, Warren this Buffett, nigga Jay man. Room, she'd be like, man, how the fuck? <laughs> when, did you, when did you get my, my dog number to call? Man, what's wrong with you, man? Exactly, bro. Um, and, and some real shit got said at that table, bro. Um, you know, Warren Buffett was talking about luck. He said, um, you know, even though I am as successful as I am, I got to attribute some to luck because, number one, I was born in America. He said, I've been over to places in China where them people don't even have half of a percent of a chance to be successful ever, period. <laughs> he was like, number two, um, I'm not a woman. <laughs> he just considered being He's a man this. a blessing. And then he said, number three, right next to Jay-Z, I'm not black. And all Jay-Z could do was like, you're right. <laughs> I got lucky. <laughs> That's correct. You know, like, if that was me sitting there, I don't know how I would, like, of course you'd be like, I'm I'm black and I'm here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I'm still here. So, I mean, I worked harder. That yeah, mean, I really he, got the he sauce. Know he had to work harder, yeah. So, it's like, do you take that? Like, You got to be at a certain mature level for that. Exactly. You got to be mature. You got to be a one percenter, if you ask me. And I think one percenters operate on the, on the I ain't going to say a specific type of conscience, but they have a certain tune to their frequency. Like, they just operate different. Like, there's certain stuff you can say around them that they just would not take offense to. Like, any white person can say the N-word to me, and it wouldn't do anything. I'm bulletproof to that word. It doesn't do anything to me. Word. I'm not offended by it at all. Word. I know what you're trying to do here, and it's not working. Word. Exactly. You know, I commend you, my brother. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say I'm about to be, like, the Hulk. Right. But I'm going to ask you, like, bro, you, did you just say that? Like, you know, it's like, it's a lie just don't cross. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh it's not that it, it's not that it bothers me. It's the mm-hmm. fact that you said it because you think it was gonna bother me. It's Have you been like, on Xbox Live before? No. That's why I first got introduced to it. Bro. <laughs> oh my! So I got bulletproof to that shit fast. Your first day hopping on that, you got called seventy of them. See, I only been on live on the four, the PS4. So. Oh okay, okay. okay. We we'll we'll make we we'll make Xbox so special though. I don't know, man. It was just you could get parties and shit, dog. And hit lobbies eighteen deep, so it was a lot of people in there, bro. But. Sh- it was a lot of N words being thrown around. So man, that's crazy. <laughs> so man. you become immune to it, you know, in that atmosphere, you know, over time. So, but yeah, it's just like you know, like we said, you know, certain one percenters or people who just they they have a really good understanding of who they are and what where they're going. Certain shit just don't even bother them. Like, okay. and I know Warren Buffett. I, I I feel like I've consumed enough of his content to know him on a deeper level to know that he meant no disrespect by that. He was just stating oh, where he, he felt like he was lucky. I, he definitely was making, uh, setting the tone for it, the yeah. picture he was trying to paint. He yeah. definitely wasn't saying, like, oh, thank God I wasn't black. Like, right, no, right, no, right. No, no. He not, he, trying, he not trying to do that. He ain't want, he ain't want that type of smoke. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He ain't want so, that type of smoke. Yeah, man. But, dude, like, man, I want to thank you for coming on, bro. Like, I like I said, that, I feel like this person is one of the best podcasts I ever did. Just off the positive this energy, guy, man. man. This guy, man. This guy, man. And you know what? You know what I'm saying? You're taking the time out your day to come through, bro. I definitely for would sure, love to sure. have you Anytime, on another man. episode. Where can people man. find you, man? Where do you post most of your content? Um, Instagram, main soul official. Uh, Twitter, main underscore soul. Um, yeah, man, hit me. Uh, new content coming as as always. Freestyle Fridays be very very lit, man. Let's get into that, man. And yeah, man, I appreciate my dog, man, for coming to get your boy, man. Part two coming soon. Part two coming soon, man. Hey, we gonna be watching you too. Woo! Hey, we gonna be watching his ass. Appreciate you, appreciate <laughs> you man. Ah, right. for sure.